thanks for attending this uh, lightning talk. I'm going to talk about how to build a distributed enterprise cloud with Open Nebula. Okay, my name is Constantino Vázquez. I'm the uh, COO of uh, Open Nebula Systems. And um, uh, among other things, I'm leading the engineering team. Uh, so I'm responsible for the uh, um, services, uh, being those cloud deployment or support or um, you know uh, upgrades and consulting and engineering services for for customers of Open Nebula Systems. Okay, so I wanted to introduce uh, Open Nebula <clears throat> for those of you that. Uh, do not know the platform, Open Nebula, it's an open source uh, cloud management uh, tool that lets you build uh, private, uh, hybrid, um, public clouds. Um, it's uh, based on a very unrestrictive open source license, such, such as the Apache uh, 2 license. Uh, all our development is uh, public in GitHub. You can check in github.com slash opennebula. You can see the, the public repositories where we contribute uh, our code. And uh, you can download the software, obviously, and uh, deploy a private cloud in your data center and uh, start, you know, um, deploying different workload profiles uh, on top of your Open Nebula Cloud. This is the, um, you know, the traditional um, focus of Open Nebula has been to build private clouds in a core data center. But as of lately, we're been adding uh, functionality to Open Nebula to allow for uh, multi-cloud deployments, so you can deploy Open Nebula and your data center and grow it using resources from public cloud providers and also edge cloud providers. Okay, uh, in this slide, I just want to uh, highlight that Open Nebula is a widely used uh, technology. Uh, we've been uh, developing it for uh, over 14 years now. Uh, since 2008, I think it was the first technology preview. And uh, since then, uh, we've been gaining adoption, Open Nebula has been gaining adoption. So in the last year, we had more than 100,000 downloads of the software. Uh, since we are an open source project, it's uh, difficult for us to uh, gauge, gauge the uh, number of uh, users uh, that uh, are uh, you know, managing uh, infrastructure using Open Nebula, since um, people can download the software and we they don't have to tell anything about about it uh, to us. But um, using you know statistics of uh, access to our marketplace, so um, uh, if you install Open Nebula from scratch, it will try to um, contact the Open Nebula public marketplace and. Uh, we know that uh, there's over 5,000 active Open Nebula clouds. Uh, and by active, I mean that uh, they have been uh, running consistently for over three months. And uh, we, this is uh, something that it's um, uh, currently available, those 5,000 active clouds, and there may be more for all we know. Uh, and there's some fairly large deployments, okay? So uh, the largest we know, it spans across 16 different data centers using the federation capabilities of Open Nebula, and it manages an aggregated uh, number of over 300,000 uh, CPU cores. Okay, um, and Open Nebula has been using a variety of uh, industry niches. so. It's being used by people in the telco space, also people from financial institutions, people from gaming, uh, public sector, vendors. So it's um, a network, we can say that it's a technology, a technology that's uh, horizontal to, to different industry verticals. Okay, so um, a bit on what 
uh, Open Nebula allows you to do uh, for a private cloud, right? So if you have a data center and you want to um, somehow build a cloud to uh, you know make uh, your resources available to other people, uh, you can build this private cloud using Open Nebula on top of different hypervisor storage and also networking technologies. So in terms of hypervisors, for instance, uh, Open Nebula can leverage existing VMware infrastructures. In this case, all the interaction with um, the infrastructure is through the vCenter uh, API. Okay. Uh, and it, Open Nebula delegates some of the actions like uh, copying BMDKs between data stores and so on and so forth. It delegates some of those operations on, on vCenter. On other uh, open source hypervisors like KVM, Firecracker, and even LXC for system containers, uh, Open Nebula does all this management directly in the hosts uh, using its uh, different subsystems, like the transfer manager subsystem to uh, move images around, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, so um, it also orchestrates different uh, storage and networking resources with um, you know, different uh, compatibility, with different storage backends and also networking backends. So you can build a, a custom tailored uh, cloud for your specific needs. Okay. Um, so comparing it with um, you know a deployment based on on VMware, uh, Open Nebula offers us uh, some benefits, okay? Um, obviously, OpenEbula doesn't mean to offer uh, all the functionality that is available now uh, on a VMware cloud, uh, but the idea is to offer a significant percentage of the functionality that is useful for a significant percentage of users and at a lower price, okay? So for instance, we offer, or rather OpenEbula offers, um, a subset of the functionality of be realized uh, and it, it's uh, it comes at a much lower total cost of ownership and also uh, the lower degree of uh, complexity okay so um, for instance open nebula is much easier to install upgrade and maintain that uh, be realized and be a sphere uh, stack Okay, and also the graphical interfaces are much more point and click oriented for self service uh, provisioning portal. Okay, also with Open Nebula, you can build uh, clouds that are based on different hypervisor technologies. So you can um, somehow create a private cloud that combines resources from VMware and also from uh, other hypervisor technologies like KVM. Okay, and you can maintain different clusters, all managed by the same Open Nebula instance, and made, make those uh, all those resources available to your end users. And it can be even in a transparent way, right? So your end users that doesn't need to know if their virtual machines are running in KVM or vCenter, they just spawn a virtual machine, get the credentials to access it, that's it. Um, okay. Also, uh, Open Nebula offers uh, high degree of uh, customization, okay? So there's several mechanisms in Open Nebula that helps you integrate it with different business processes. Like for instance, um, the hook uh, mechanism where you can create, um, you know, uh, you can trigger uh, calls to different um, processes based on changes of a state of any resource in Open Nebula or any API call, okay? So that lets you to stuff like, for instance, create um, uh, a process that creates an email address and sends it to the user with the VM credentials or an IP address where the VM is in running state, for instance. And of course, you can um, create all these uh, multi-cloud environments we were talking about at the beginning. Uh, so this. Um, you know, this extension of your private cloud using public cloud resources. You can build this kind of, uh, of, um, of uh, multi-cloud and edge clouds 
uh, using as a starting point a VMware infrastructure. So you can deploy uh, your Open Nebula on top of a uh, vCenter, and then if you need more resources, you can use the built-in tools like the one provision interface to add new um, to add new Open Nebula clusters based on the offering of different public cloud providers. Okay, you have here this landing page uh, that explains in more detail the benefits of uh, running uh, an Open Nebula cloud uh, compared to uh, running a pure VMware cloud. Okay, so um, this is a, a bit uh, the functionality I was mentioned before about migrating workload. So Open Nebula does not let you uh, migrate running virtual machines between VMware and KVM. That would be ideal, but uh, it's not something that is supported by Open Nebula at the moment. But it lets you uh, do, I think, a couple of functionality that lets you uh, migrate uh, your infrastructure from VMware to KVM if uh, if uh, you are looking for such a thing, right? So the first thing is the ability of Open Nebula to harness resources uh, from both uh, worlds and offer them in a single pane of glass. Okay, so your end users they can deploy. You know, uh, a virtual machine that is available in our marketplace or uh, really any any workload can be deployed on KVM and on VMware and they can be consumed uh, uh, in a transparent way. So uh, the mechanism that Open Nebula lets you, uh, gives you to, to do this um, Workload compatibility, it's the ability to uh, transform Kukal2 images that you can use in KPM to VMDK images that you can use in VMware. And the other way around, you can uh, use uh, VMDK images that Open Nebula will transform to Kukal2 images. Okay, so this is the compatibility, compatibility that Open Nebula gives is at the image level. Then uh, you need to build a uh, Open Nebula VM template based on this uh, transformed, if you want, uh, image. And then once you have this Open Nebula VM template with this new uh, migrated image, you can start deploying uh, virtual machines in VMware using an image that was previously used for virtual machines in KVM. Okay, so well, besides uh, having this uh, southbound uh, capability of uh, managing different hypervisor technologies and even uh, different um, hardware availability, being that in your core data center or in a different public or edge cloud provider, Open Nebula also gives you the ability to deploy different workload profiles. Okay, so you can uh, deploy virtual machines based on any of these. Um, hypervisor technologies, but you can also deploy LXC uh, system containers, and you can also deploy Docker Hub containers directly from the Docker Hub marketplace. So Open Nebula, what it does behind the scenes, it just creates a one-to-one -one matching of these uh, Docker uh, containers and um, Firecracker micro VMs. Um, so it gives you this added um, this added um, security of the virtualization isolation, and also using Firecracker technology, the overhead of the virtualization it's reduced to a minimum. And on top of that, you can also uh, deploy full Kubernetes clusters uh, using Open Nebula. You have uh, different Kubernetes and K3S, which are Kubernetes um, flavor more up to the edge because it has a uh, less uh, memory footprint than Kubernetes. Uh, but you have these appliances available in our marketplace and you can start from an open Nebula from scratch and in very little time start deploying uh, full Kubernetes clusters on top of your open Nebula cloud. Okay. Um, Okay, I'm going to do the demo for this. Okay, but you have here uh, some 
screencasts. Uh, you can go to this URL and see how you can um, start deploying uh, Open Nebula on top of your existing VMware infrastructure, for instance, using V1 Cloud. So V1 Cloud is basically an OBA appliance that you can uh, deploy uh, directly to um, to your vCenter and start using the Open Nebula interface to import VMware resources such as virtual networks, even existing virtual machines, and start creating a multi-tenancy environment so your end users can start consuming resources from your VMware cloud in a controlled way. Okay, so you can uh, deploy your Open Nebula cloud in, in that fashion in five minutes. Just deploying the OBA, configuring the network, and you're good to go. Um, and then you can also use that uh, V1 Cloud, um, the very same V1 Cloud appliance, which is basically an open enable under the hood, to uh, start creating these uh, multi cloud and X cloud clusters. If you want to explore that possibility, uh, all the functionality is also inside, inside this V1 uh, Cloud appliance. Okay, and um, you have also, if you don't want to um, fiddle with V1 Cloud by yourself, we have a quick start guide that walks you through all the process of deploying uh, Open Ebola on top of uh, VMware using this V1 uh, Cloud appliance and also in the process of creating these edge clusters in Open Nebula uh, One Provision tool and uh, start deploying different workloads like containers, virtual machines, and uh, Kubernetes on top of your new Open Nebula cloud. OK, thanks for attending. And uh, feel free to uh, contact us if you have any questions or you want a demo or evaluate our software. Thanks. OK, Tina, thank you for presentation. Uh, uh, I see uh, guys with us in room, and uh, so if uh, anyone has questions, uh, they can join uh, to audio and video or the question in chat. Uh, so, meanwhile, uh, personally, I have a question about. Uh, uh, Compatibility. Uh, if we migrate some uh, workload from uh, VMware to KVM, uh, we also uh, uh, need to keep in mind uh, that there is uh, things like uh, VMware tools and uh, uh, need to install maybe some tools inside the uh, um, KVM machine. So uh, do we also uh, have such kind of possibility uh, to to work with uh, virtual machine inside virtual machine and uh, migrate more smoothly and more easy. Okay, so yeah, let me see if I understand the question. So you're asking uh, about the compatibility. Uh, what happens with uh, things like VMware tools, for instance, uh, that are not really useful in the KVM environment? Yeah. Okay, so. Um, yeah, to answer your question, uh, so Open Nebula uses uh, its own contextualization packages. Uh, it's, um, there are flavors available for Linux and VMware, and they work a bit different uh, in, in, in VMware environments and in KVM environments. Okay, so in VMware, it, it does leverage uh, the VMware tools uh, to extract information that are passed uh, from Open Nebula to the virtual machine. Uh, this can have things like, I don't know, uh, SSH uh, public keys that would be authorized, for instance, to enter the, the virtual machine. Okay, so um, when, open, when the VM boots up, this contextualization package, it adds uh, some, uh, you know, boot scripts that extract information from these VMware tools and configure the VM accordingly, okay? In KVM, it works a bit different. They are the same context packages, but instead of using VMware tools, it uses uh, um, uh, the recommended standard for contextualization, which is basically at uh, CD ISO, 
okay, mm -hmm. with the information that uh, that uh, in in VMware it's passed through VMware tools in KVM is passed through this uh, to this CD one. Okay, so <clears throat> um, answer to your question, the virtual machine, uh, if it's configured with the contextualization packages, it will work. Uh, in VMware and it will also work in, in KVM, okay? But when you do this change from VMware to KVM, you can also customize the image and remove the VMware tools if you're not going to use it. So that would be like the best practice. It's not a requirement. Image will work the same if it doesn't detect uh, the uh, um, valid VMware tools uh, where they can extract information from, but it detects a CD mounted in the in the route where the context factor just expects it. So it's being added by Open Nebula. Um, it will work the same, but you will have a, a daemon, the VMware tools daemon that uh, is completely optional and you can remove. Okay, so I don't know if that answers the question. Yes, I got the idea. Okay. Um, and things like uh, metadata about uh, virtual machine, like networks, uh, etc. So, uh, but they will be also migrated. Okay. No. So that that's that's the thing. So the 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 the, um, the migration help or the migration functionality that OpenEvula offers is at the image level. So basically, mm -hmm. if you have a VMDK and translated to a cookout to image, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't um, create the VM template for you. So this is some kind of a manual step, right? Where you have to create a virtual machine, uh, sorry, a virtual machine template, uh, add it uh, the disk that you just transform uh, to the VM template, and also add the networks that are going to uh, sustain this virtual machine, right? So it's up to you to, to choose which networks that are available in the KVM clusters you want to use for your new virtual machine. So OpenEvula won't do this automatically for you at the moment. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Uh, got this for the last one. Mm. Okay. Thank you finally that you come to- Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you for presentation. I hope uh, the information was interesting for joining people. Hope so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And yeah, feel free to contact me uh, for any further questions on this topic.